Well, the Democrats' three stooges are at it again, this time using grotesque commentary from one of their own to gaslight the critics. Now, there's a three-step process to this strategy. Stay with me. Step one, make an outrageously offensive statement. CARE was founded after 9-11 because they recognized that some people did something and that all of us were starting to lose access to our civil liberties. Forget for a moment that CARE was founded in 1994, not after 9-11. Uh, the casual way she describes the horror of 9-11 is deplorable. But here is where we get to step two, avoiding any responsibility. People get, come after minorities for things that they say might, they might have insinuated. Well, finally, step three, have your allies then back you up, wing women, to push back the backlash and then claim it's all because of bigotry. This is just pure racist act by many of those, hateful acts by those, because she does speak truth. We are getting to a level where, the, where this is an incitement of violence against progressive women of color. Incitement of violence? I don't even know what she's talking about. Joining me now is Azra Namani, co-founder of the Muslim Reform Movement and Qasem Rashid, Virginia State Senate candidate. Azra, let's start with you. Can you find any way to defend what Congresswoman Omar said, and what do you make of the arguments of some of her colleagues? No, what she said was completely callous and insensitive. And I have to tell you, as a Muslim who has grown up in America, what she said is typical. It's typical of what we hear in our living rooms and in our mosques, the denial and obfuscation of tragedies that are expressed because of an extremist interpretation of Islam, what's happening now is you all are getting to see it in prime time. You're getting to live what we endure every day with denials, a, a turning of the table, the victim card. We, as Muslim reformers, are on the hit list of the organizations that folks like Rashida Talib and Ilan Omar are raising money for. The Council on American Islamic Relations was not founded after 9-11, but its agenda to push a victimization of Muslims did begin after 9-11 because they didn't want to deal with the number one problem that we face in our Muslim community, the extremism. Radicalization. Yeah. Um, again, Qasem, she said 9-11 yeah. as some people who did something. We had, we had a lot of Americans dead. Um, yeah. I was, well, was here in Washington. It was a I saw the Pentagon in yeah. flames. It was a terrorist attack. I mean, I, I would just say to my colleague, if she's going to mosques where people are denying terrorism, she's hanging out with extremists and she shouldn't do that. You know, every mosque I've been to has been clear to contend uh, terrorism. What Rep. Omar was clearly saying was that it, when we talk about the civil liberties being taken away, there were people in the U.S. government uh, taking away civil liberties. Your last segment talked about illegally spying on the president. Well, the NYPD spied on American Muslims for six years without a warrant. That was the, you know, stripping away of our civil liberties. So this you know, today's again, a, today's a, a very, I'm sorry, I, I didn't interrupt you. I didn't, I didn't interrupt you. I didn't interrupt you. Let me finish. But, but I today's one today's a very important yeah. day in my family's yeah. life. Today, 22 years ago today, my brother graduated from the U.S. Marine Corps boot camp. That's awesome. And he was in the military, in the Marines during 9-11, when 9-11 happened. I remember calling him horrified of what might happen to him. And he was very clear with me. He said, I'm here to serve my country. I'm an American, I'm a Muslim, I'm an immigrant well, who is here to serve my country. But you're saying the right things. That doesn't excuse what but, she but said. Like, you're telling well, a good story. Well, That's well, great. I'm telling the and accurate story. Let me and, just add, and George Bush well, went need, to the need, Islamic need, Center. Did he me, not the day after And I need to finish my story. But let me finish my story. I'd like to give a story time. We've got to be quick here. And the point was that despite the fact that he was despite the fact that he was in the U.S. Marines, he was still profiled, he was still taken off planes, he was still questioned because of identity. That is what people should be profiled. I don't need to go to a mosque in order to see the kind of denial that we here, I have it right in front of me. I have no denial. What, I you, love it was a terrorist attack. You said right. very explicitly that jihad is only means a holy struggle. That Where you, did I say that? Oh, right here. It does not in any way mean to wage holy war or kill the infidel or commit terrorism. Right. It permits self-defense. When people are killing Christians, Excuse Islam me, you stop permits turning Muslims your back on me? I'm to not fight sure why against terrorism. Why are you on turning it back on me? I'm trying right? to talk to you. Yeah, I'm We're right. all together. Oh, sure. I'm, I'm here. Well, Islam permits self-defense mm -hmm. when people are trying to kill Christians and try to kill Jews and try to kill people of any faith. Oh. Islam says you are allowed to defend sort of like, churches. In fact, the Quran like commands you. Like Al-Qaeda justified the killing of Americans on 9-11 because... No, they were, were terrorists. Right, because yeah. we were... There was nothing jihad we about that. That was terrorism. I got to play a video. That was terrorism. So you deny jihad as a 
violence. I've got expression. to play this and That's the guys. problem. Oh, you are the you problem. You guys both have to hear this. This is Please. important. Newly unearthed video of Elon Omar mocking Americans, forget this, being anxious over Al Qaeda. When I was in college, I took uh, a terrorism class. Every time the, the, the professor said Al Qaeda, he sort of like his shoulders yeah. went up and, you know, yeah, he's in command like, here. Al Qaeda, you know, hospital. You don't say America with an yeah. intensity. You yeah. don't say England with yeah. an intensity. Yeah. You know, you don't, you don't say um, the army with an intensity. Because the army didn't try to knock down. I mean, right. I mean you can't. You, you, I know I, I you're not going to defend. I don't need. That. I don't need to because she can speak for herself. Yeah. My my point is this: that if we're going to get anywhere as a country, right. we need to have dialogue. We need to work together. We need to recognize that the New York Post taking out a full-page ad accusing a representative Omar. Here's of something your something. Put it up on the screen. It's I love terrible. this. I love this. Cover. I mean, the sheer yeah. fact that she's faced bomb. Here's threats, your something. She, she says she referred right. to it as some some people did something. What My I mean, friends here's, died here's, in New York. And, My friends died right. here. And here's it, the it's problem. very personal. It's very personal. Here's, here's it should the be. Problem. Even Excuse today. Me. She's Excuse laughing. Me. Thank you. She's not laughing. laughing about Al Qaeda. An American Muslim told me her Hassim, uncle was killed on 9-11. Hassim, and Trump supporters are mocking is, her. The Why are they mocking her? Excuse, Excuse me. Can you, I, do I not exist? Do I not exist right here? Like, are you just doing the same kind of, like, denial of a voice? You don't need to be a victim. You can talk to me. Oh, but... We're, out of we, time. we're happy to have Rashi, the Talib, and Ilan Omar be the victim, right? Because they never do anything wrong, and that's exactly the problem. Well, there's there's an want. inability yeah. to own right, up go. to the problems within our well, community. We, I, I want to celebrate the fact that your brothers in the Marine Corps, because I love the Marines. I yeah. don't care where you're from. I don't think it, I don't care what your faith is. I love that. He's and a I'm proud so Muslim glad. and a proud American. Well, well, God bless. You know, yeah. I'm a proud Christian. Absolutely. You're a proud Muslim let's, as well. And let's fight I, it. But I think the sneering of anything to do with 9/11. You wouldn't do it. She yeah. shouldn't do it. She didn't do it. She 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 sneered she against right. the civil liberties taken away, and I think we agree on that. Yeah. Nobody no, should have the civil liberties taken away. That's not what she agree. said. We don't well, agree. If you watch the full 20-minute clip, that's pretty clear. The full 20-minute yeah. clip. I, don't, I wouldn't get. I wouldn't get. I wouldn't get that it's kind of thing. Well, my helps no one. I think you agree with that. It's a lot offensive. Well, I have a provocative question to ask tonight. Even this is not this is provocative. Come on, this is a show. Congresswomen Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Rashida Tlaib are jumping to the defense of their fellow freshman, Congresswoman Ilhan Omar, who's facing serious heat over the words she used to describe the 9-11 terror attacks. Senior Capitol Hill producer Chad Pergram has the very latest. Chad? Shannon, it's freshmen battling freshmen. It started late last month when Ilhan Omar gave what many regarded as a trivialized assessment of September 11th. Far too long, we have lived with the discomfort of being a second-class citizen. And frankly, I'm tired of it, and every single Muslim in this country should be tired of it. CARE was founded after 9-11 because they recognized that some people did something and that all of us were starting to lose access to our civil liberties. The New York Post took on Omar directly with a dramatic front page. Here's your something. 2,977 people dead by terrorism, thundered the Post. GOP Texas Representative Dan Crenshaw is a former Navy SEAL wounded by an IED in Afghanistan. Crenshaw tore into his fellow freshman classmate on Twitter. First member of Congress to ever describe terrorists who killed thousands of Americans on 9-11 as, quote, some people who did something unbelievable. Freshman Democrat Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez upbraided the New York Post for what she described as its, quote, horrifying, hateful cover. To elicit such an image for such a transparently and politically motivated attack on Ilhan, this is, we are getting to a level where, the, where this is an incitement of violence against progressive women of color. And if they can't figure out how to get it back to policy, we need to call it out for what it is, because this is not normal. The only other Muslim female in Congress, Michigan Democrat Rashida Tlaib, rushed to Omar's defense. They do this all the time to us, especially women of color. They do that. They take our words out of context because they're afraid because we speak truth. We speak truth to power. Being a refugee herself, she sees what terrorism can do. She sees what violence can do to a whole country, to a whole people. Taking it out of context, this is just pure racist act by many of those. Congresswoman Omar says her fellow freshman, GOP Representative Dan Crenshaw, went too far, especially since the feds just arrested a New York man who wanted to kill her. Crenshaw says he never incited violence against Omar. 
Shannon. All right, Chad Pergram on the Hill, thank you very much. Of course, Congresswoman Omar is no stranger to controversy. She's made numerous comments many have deemed anti-Semitic. Back in 2017, she tweeted this, America was founded by genocide, saying we maintain power through neo-colonialism. That was pre-election. So let's bring in Julian Epstein, former chief counsel for the House Judiciary Committee and Fox News contributor Guy Benson to debate or discuss. We'll see how it goes. Gentlemen, welcome to you both. Hi, Shannon. Okay, so Chad talked about the initial tweet there by Dan Crenshaw, a Republican freshman as well, um, saying this is unbelievable. So retweeting his tweet and another, uh, Congresswoman Omar added this. She said, this is dangerous incitement. Given the death threats I face, and there has been an arrest on that front, I hope leaders of both parties will join me in condemning it. My love and commitment to our country and that of my colleagues should never be in question. We are all Americans. Guy? It's not incitement. Um, so what Omar said about 9-11, I grew up in the New York area. My dad was in Lower Manhattan on 9-11. As I watched her describe it the way that she did, there was another interview where she was sort of awkwardly laughing through some discussion of terrorism. It made me cringe a little bit. I wouldn't talk about those things that way. I was less angry about what she said than some of the responses in her defense from her and from the two other freshmen that we talked about. It is not incitement to harshly criticize a public official. If that were the standard, then we would never talk in politics. Because if that's incitement against Ilhan Omar, then all the criticisms against Donald Trump are a threat to his life, so everyone shut up. I think it's a really cheap silencing technique that they're trying to use here. And the other thing quickly that bothered me from AOC and the others, I guess, to leave. They both suggested this was racist. Mm -hmm. No, you can have a big problem with it, with what Omar said or how she said it without being a racist. Um, the fact that AOC in a subsequent tweet went after Dan Crenshaw and sort of suggested that he hasn't done enough for Americans after 9-11. She called him out. Why didn't he support this? Why didn't he support that? Dan Crenshaw after 9-11 signed up, wore the uniform, went to Afghanistan and lost an eye. So I think AOC and her crew should be a little bit careful before they start throwing around questioning people's commitment uh, to the country after 9-11. Well, Julian, Julian, he responded to her tweet. Crenshaw, again, back to her, said this. I never called you un-American. I did not incite any violence against you. You described an act of terrorism on American soil that killed thousands of innocent lives as, quote, some people did something. It's still unbelievable, as is your response here. I don't think those two are going to be eating lunch together. <laughs> <laughs> in the house cafeteria, the members' dining room. Who knows? They had that famous beer uh, uh, summit, summit yeah. at the White House. I, I actually think you make a good point about the reaction, the defense of um, of Omar being kind of really over the top and kind of being not constructive and 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 really not helpful. Um, so I, I think you make a very good point there. Um, I, look, I've been very critical of Omar. I've been critical on this show. I've been critical about what I see as her use of anti-Semitic stereotypes. Um, I took a lot of grief from Democrats for that, some Democrats for that, but I, I think it was clear some of the things that, that she was saying were, were anti-Semitic stereotypes. Um, here, her explanation is that she really what she was trying to get at was uh, the, the, the mistreatment of religious minorities after 9-11, and that was the point she was trying to get to. And I don't really know what's in her heart. Maybe she should be called to explain for that, to, to explain it. Um, I think she ought to explain it. But to, but, but to bring up the, invoke the, the idea of racism I as a defense I, I of her, agree. what do you make I of don't, that? I don't, I, I think that is a, I think that's an unfortunate use of, um, that kind of defense, and I think sometimes that defense is overused on the left for things that are inappropriate, and I think it's inappropriate here. I mean, look, 9-11 is an open wound um, on our national soul, and I think any time you speak about it, you have to use very, very careful language, and you have to, it's your duty to make sure that you are not interpreted as lessening the significance of that. And whether she was or wasn't, the language that I think she used, just from a political point of view for Democrats, is just really, really bad politics for Democrats. Mm -hmm. And I think digging in the way some of her defenders have done, to your point, and I think saying that this is uh, the attack on her was rac racially driven, I just don't think helps matters that much. Anything that you think she needs to say or will? Because she may not feel like she needs to apologize. She has said she's taken out of context quickly. Well, she didn't apologize for her anti-Semitism, right? She did this apology there, that apology there, did a victory lap after the Democrats failed to condemn her. I just think it's very rich for someone who is now on multiple occasions 
trafficked in bigotry is claiming that legitimate criticisms of her are tantamount to bigotry. Uh, it's it's not a good look. Always better when we all stick to content and policy versus personal attacks, regardless of what side you're on. So thank you. You guys might be singing Kumbaya during the commercial. I don't know. There's so much agreement between you two. I've never seen it before. Thanks for being here. Thanks. Okay.